So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, answer them. Jill, you, you're going to... Uh, I'll take the reins. Yeah, here. exactly. Okay, cool. All right, Rod asked. We're going to dive right in. Welcome. We have a lot of new people, so welcome, everyone. Um, Rod, what is speed of distribution? I have no idea, oh my truthfully. God, I'm I've I'm never looking. heard of that. Honestly, had heard of that in my life. I'm like, I'm going to look it up. What does Google say? I have an idea what I think it is, but that doesn't mean it's right. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> if you have to guess, don't. Let's not do that. No, I'm not going to guess. Um, if anybody listening knows, please let us know in the chat. And uh, well, according to Google and uslegal.com, it says it's a method of transferring real property when the devisee of real property cannot be determined by reading the will. In such cases, an executor or administrator deserve, determines who is to receive the property. Oh. Yeah. I, I can't even know. Oh, 16,000 deals. I've never heard that. I haven't had one of those. So, the, so here's what that makes me think. It makes me think that there's, it's, if it's not clear and we have a deed of distribution, that means we're putting it in this name because we still don't know who's the right person to get the property. Yeah, so, so somebody else decides instead of it having it go back to the state, which is right. Good. Exactly. So cool. I'm curious how this. So I guess the deed of distribution now still needs to go to somebody's still got to make it from that deed to a the correct deed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I think instead question. of a warranty deed, it's it's a deed of distribution. So right. it does it does name somebody. And it sounds like it's in an, in an interim deed because now that interim person's got to make it a warranty deed and then they can do something with it. Yeah. So. Ooh, you can get a title company to do it on, on a deal like that. Just get title involved for sure. Mm -hmm. It's fuzzy. Okay. Eric says, how can I record a property if it's under the deceased dad and the son is selling it? Can the son sign an affidavit and provide me a death certificate to the county, deed the property to the son, and then to me? It depends on how the deed is written. And well, if it depends on what state it's in. And the state. Yeah. Yeah. Just because just because he says it's my dad's and I'm the son, it, now I automatically get it. No, that's not the case. They could have been married. He could be, and there's, and so there could be, in the way the deed is, the state, and the way the yes, deed is Yes, in California. Done. It's in California, and the answer is yes. You're in luck. There's a very, very simple oh. addendum. The son has a trust. Okay, now you're in good shape. Yeah. Good. So th those are the things that you need to know. So, yes. Good, good. Oh, I was having trouble with parcel fact. Is it all fixed now? I'd love to know um, what... Can you craft an email, Kevin, and send it to Joe? Please. Yeah, what was the thing? Because it may be fixed, depending on what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. Um, Jessica said, newbie question, is going through title and going through escrow the same thing? Yeah, there, it's not the same thing. Here's the thing. You use an escrow agent to put together the deal so that no one has to trust each other. All you have to do is, is, uh, what the escrow agent does, uh, even there's escrow companies for cars or any other asset where that brief moment before between when you hand money over to somebody and they hand you a title or a deed, that person's theoretically an unrelated third party. And they put the whole thing transaction together so nobody really has to trust each other. That's what escrow is. Uh, and it applies to any kind of transaction. Title company, what ends up happening is the escrow company then through, I guess, over time and through tr probably tradition, issues a title policy as part of the things, part of the, the, the transaction. So mm -hmm. yeah, but we say, well, go through title, go through escrow. They're synonymous. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. We buy land company. I know who this is and I'm trying to think what your name is. So hi. Um, have you ever acquired or created an easement to one of your properties to help you sell it, sell a property quicker uh, slash for more money? Have I ever done that? Yeah, but it was a real long time ago and I regret it. Every time I get into <laughs> every time I get involved in any type of easement scenario, I'm, I, I say, boy, this was not worth the effort. So um, I wish I had better news. 
uh, what I like to do about easements when a property needs an easement or doesn't have one is, is uh, celebrate the fact that it doesn't have any, uh, it does not have an easement and the person you're going to sell it to is going to go get an easement and that's why it's so cheap. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. That's what I do. Buy, buy this easement list property for next to nothing for me, even though you've doubled your money. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. how I handle it. If you're somebody like Kathleen that won't fly, you have to actually put your put your heart and soul into each transaction <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> exactly. and, know, and, know, and, and know every single last detail about the piece of property. In fact, you, you, you probably should. She probably goes and sleeps on it overnight. Just, she's just so good. She's have saying, a feeling. There you go. Don't do it. Look at <laughs> she's changing her tune. She knows now. It's oh, all good. good. No, good. and that's and that's the thing, Mason. When it gets to this kind of point, oh, that's his Mason. By the way, thank you for helping me there. Um, this kind of stuff, and when it comes to um, uh, blading a road to get to it or staking it out. All this stuff, I politely explain to them, here's the deal. It's priced this way because I'm not doing this, this, or this. Now, if you want me to, oh, I'm happy to do it. But let me tell you, it's not going to be what you would pay if you went and did it by yourself. And they all go, okay, never mind. <laughs> the notion of improving a property to make it more valuable is, from, is right out of 1932. And it's mm -hmm. all old school real estate de developer garbage, in my opinion. If you buy it right, buy it super, super, super cheap, you've done your, you've done all the work. Mm -hmm. Look what Kathleen just said. I ended up selling my no easement parcel to the angry neighbor. No I, access. Yeah. I sat tight and did not try to get an easement. Thank you. There you go. Yep. So yeah, you know what, then I, I, I appreciate that we're all hungry. You want to maximize value. The best way to maximize value is up your numbers. And I don't mean dating. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the best, just Luke Smith, the thing, you know, send a bajillion letters out, yeah. get a massive amount of mail coming back your way, mm -hmm. and you won't even have time to think about easements. You'll just be doubling your money mm -hmm. and moving on to the next deal. Yeah. You know, even the earlier question about, uh, you know, I'm by no stretch, am I, do I know a lot about deeding property to people? That topic seems to consume our, um, success plan and it consumes uh yeah. in fact we in fact jill and i decided not to take any questions on the podcast anymore relating to deeding because it's just mm -hmm. taken over and the, what we really should be talking about is where's where are good places to mail property which is what i'm going to talk about at 3 30 here mm -hmm. creative ways to find places to mail mail property i'm sorry mail mm -hmm. uh offers and we good can places all, to sell them yeah like you're right we can all happily be be very very busy for years to come Taking the cream off the top of these mailers. Oh, I like the and cream not off getting, the top. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And not getting hung up on, oh, I need to close this one, but I got to find this guy, and here's the deal. Nah. You know what? And that, so or you know what? If you really feel like it's a whatever, put it aside, and then get back to it when you have time, and watch you won't have time, and you'll have long forgotten about it. There's several people that have, um, have really – kind of followed our inadvertent lead on buying more expensive property and then selling it for, you know, buying a hundred thousand dollar piece of land and selling it for 150 when it's worth 350. Um, mm -hmm. Then you don't ever deed anything ever, ever again. You just go through title because it's so inexpensive compared to how much money you're making. Yeah. You know, you're right. Isn't I, the real I have every Wednesday I have uh, consulting calls all day. I mean, from nine o'clock until four o'clock and more and more and more I'm seeing new people and uh, some older people following, like Claire came to this, Claire, one of our, Claire Harriet, who's on the call, uh, came to the realization after doing a ton of deals that she only needed to do like one really good deal for every 10 to 15 smaller deals. And so I'd love to know how that's going, Claire, if it's working out, because, but because the people I talk to every Wednesday is working out great. Mm -hmm. They have no competition in the 100, the 300 to the 50,000 to 300 thousand dollar range at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So as far as improvements go, let me wrap this up too. None of that applies. What I said to put to splitting property up, um, taking the time and the energy to split properties up and doing whatever it takes to do that is well worth it financially. Mm -hmm. That's how to take a hundred thousand dollar profit and make it $500,000 with not a lot of time and energy. Thank you. Did I interrupt you, Joe? No, no, it's all good. No, it's perfect. Okay. 
uh, I don't know if I pronounced this right, Farone asked, uh, we just purchased our first parcel in Louisiana, and when we sold it to the new buyer, his folks, his title folks insisted we uh, submit an actual contract with our new buyer. Is this par for the course in Louisiana? It's par for the course everywhere. Um, unless you have a really good relationship with your title or escrow person, this is a very, very good question, by the way. Do you have to have a purchase agreement? You know, do you have to have a real estate agent? No. Do you have to have an attorney? Almost no. Almost always no. Do you have to have a purchase agreement? Uh, probably not. However, I don't think it's such a bad idea. And usually, uh, title escrow will do one for you for an extra like $25. We don't need to do that because we make offers all the time. But sometimes title wants to have a purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. title, the good title people have like some version of OCD, you know. They have to check every single box and make sure everything's okay. Oh, that's true. There is sometimes that comes up. You're right. The wrong title agent will want you to print out and sign a copy of your driver's license and send it in. Not kidding. We they just did a deal like that. Weird. Jill and I had to stop what we were doing one time. Yeah. Recently and do all this stuff for an old school title deal. Yep. All the stuff that was all available online. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, got it. <laughs> all right, Luke. Hey, Luke. Luke said on land can on land pin. Can we link back to our actual land listing or only our website? When I hit website on my listings, I just get to my website. Oh, I'm missing something. I know what he's talking about. I don't. So when you go to the, um, on the right where it has the contact information, like yeah. more view, like me or something, I think Luke's wondering if it, because I get a link to his website, but what if he can link it to the posting on his website? I'm writing that down, Luke, and I'm sure the answer is yes. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, right now, you cannot, but I'm, I'll look into that. That's a real easy fix. Mm -hmm. Cool. Another great point. Thank you. Yeah. See yeah. what happens when we stop talking about dating property, Joe? Exactly. We start to get incredibly good questions <laughs> and, and, and like helpful stuff and, and entertaining stuff. Exactly. This is a good question. Thank you, Gene. Um, have you guys figured out whether Jill Pay will be a flat monthly fee or a percentage of sales? If it's a percentage of the transaction, have you determined how much of that the percentage it'll, will be? It'll be the latter. There will be no, uh, Jill, stop me if, if you think something different. Sometimes after these calls, listeners, Julia says, uh, you know, you're way the hell out of, out of bounds on that. <laughs> so seriously, <laughs> stop me if uh, I don't see Jill Pay having a monthly fee at all. Do you? No, I don't see that. So think of PayPal and Jill Pay as exactly the same thing. Be but, but cheaper. Think of pay pay and you know, way cheaper. <laughs> and think of PayPal as only dealing with real estate because that's what Jill Pay is. Mm -hmm. It's a percentage and it's it'll be equivalent to Stripe. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey, Michael. Michael says, hi, I'm Acceler in Colorado. Her husband is deceased and she has a will and a death certificate. All right. I plan to record an affidavit of the deceased, uh, joint tenant form, and then record a new deed selling the property to me. Sound correct? If yeah, that's, that's the steps, um, I'm assuming that's the steps that you were told by the county because that does sound. That easy. sounds right for Colorado to me. Mm-hmm. You might even be able to slap the affidavit right on the back of the deed. In Is fact, I think that's the case. We have a couple people in, in this group that have made this their 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 life work. Mm -hmm. So you might want to reach out to um, on Deal Board, probably be a good place. Mm -hmm. Or in Success Plant would even be better. Cool. They buy property from dead people's kids in Colorado full time. Who does this? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure they would want me to say their name, Jill. Oh, so. people that I know? I yeah, know. Okay. Group, yeah. All right. I know what you're talking about. Okay. I didn't know if they did it in Colorado, but I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Luke said there's a website, landhub.com, that mm -hmm. syndicates out your listings to Landwatch, Land and Farm, and Lands in America, and a bunch of other little no name websites. They want $200 to $800 a year to do it. <laughs> They also say they will get the listings out on Craigslist. Would it be would be sweet if Landpid added that feature? Those well, are Luke, you read my mind because that yeah. will be included with uh, the Landpin subscription. Mm -hmm. This Those is Land, Land Point, This isn't even Landpin 1.0 right now. This is a beta version that we I convinced everyone to let me pre-release, mm -hmm. and that that absolutely will be included. 
you will be able to CSV upload about literally thousands of properties at a time and then syndicate them everywhere with the push of a button. Go. And that's part of why it's only to our members, everyone, and only, f I mean, it's free into our members. You guys are all testing it for us. Yep. And we are, we will not open it to the public until, we will never open it to the public for a low cost, for free, but everybody right. here, here will always have it for free. Right. Cool. Kevin said, I have several accepted offers on properties in the Chile, Chilili land grant in Torrance County, New Mexico. The ownership in that grant is disputed and the title insurance is not available due to the legal disputes. The property is legally deeded to the sellers in all cases and recorded by the county. Nice properties, 10 to 20 acres. My concern, any concerns about reselling these after I buy them? Let me tell you a story about the Chalili land grant in Torrance County, New Mexico. So it's about 15 years ago and I'm at a tax auction in Torrance County, New Mexico. And the native uh, natives there stand up and they blocked the whole auction. They stopped it, they filibustered it so they couldn't even have the auction ba uh, based on this thing. So it got rescheduled for like the next week and I went there and bought a bunch of property uh, and successfully resold it. Do I think they have a leg to stand on? Uh, they have as much leg legal leg to stand on as Mexico does over the fact that they formerly owned California. Buyer. Buy your heart out. Those properties rock and they sell for a really good amount of money. I know we've, I've bought and sold tons of them. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hey, Merritt. Okay. Merritt asked, hi, all. New member here. In following the half of the lowest listed price model, how should I count for the other Land Academy members listing their parcels? Already at half <laughs> off. <laughs> We're resetting it. We're creating our own... Our own market, values. exactly. It's not good. I may not know that they're <laughs> members, and this could drastically skew, you know, my mailer offer price. You're right. Right. Thanks for considering my question. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, yep. I don't know how you could tell if they're Land Academy members. Well, I, it's funny because he and I talked about this today. Like, we could pick out a few. Like, well, there's Luke again. See, I don't happen to know. <laughs> Because I've done this, everyone. I think it's the funniest thing on the planet. I'll be looking at comps in other places, like not Landpin, obviously. And I'm like, look, I know that person. I know that person. And I know that person. I know that person. So I happen to know. So um, shucks. I mean, you well, could you know, look at the best plant. You could, if you see a bunch, you know, that are like arbitrarily low, you could look there and see if you find your friends. This is a really good question. And, yeah. And I'll tell you, I don't have an answer. You know, I don't know how we could tell. I think here's, here's what plant's I a good way, isn't it? Yeah, well, you can't. Have, it's, it, eventually, if we just if we half ourselves, if it's going to get to zero at some point, which is unrealistic. So, you know, let's say this: take the lowest three or four properties that are posted, and just use the test of reason for pricing. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I wish I had a better answer, like a more hardcore answer, but. That's well, just the way it is. If I know if I know that person though, and I know I'm like, all right, I got a good idea how much they paid for it. I'm gonna try to do the same thing, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it that way too. Yeah. Good. Um <laughs> Luke said the best cure for low prices is low prices. <laughs> look at Luke putting his his direct dial phone number right in <laughs> right in the uh, chat thing because he's done oh. the land, those land grant properties too. And I'll tell you, they're <laughs> liquid. Liquid gold, man. I love it. Like that property up there, that stuff we would all consider living on. You know, yeah. that's a dream 20 acre property, Jill, with pine trees and it's gorgeous stuff. It's just like right sky's country. And you can buy them cheap. Awesome. 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 All right. Ferron asked, uh, when doing our engineering with Google Earth, who uses Google Earth anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. <laughs> We rarely see terrain details. Just bought five acres that our new potential buyer says has a huge ravine running mm -hmm. through the middle of it. Is there any advice on how to avoid this? Yeah, so uh, Google Earth Pro, which I hope everyone's using because it's free, not just Google Earth, has a bunch of terrain features where you can, here, let me show you. Mm -hmm. If you watch the screen. I'm gonna look at Camelback Mountain, which I'm actually looking at out of my window at right now. Are you using parcel fact to get to it? You can, you know, parcel fact. That's a good point, Jill. You know, I mean, you can use it. I would use parcel fact 
to get to, and then click on the, the map Camel fact. to get to this. Camel fact. Camel fact is what I wrote because we're a parcel fact and camel back. I love it. I'm sure I have my terrain. So see up in uh, see up in the corner, up my up in the upper right corner. If you go like this, see it all gets 3D. Mm -hmm. And see this bottom on the bottom left here. See this terrain box? It's really cool, and you should be able to smoke that stuff out pretty well. Isn't that cool, Joe? Mm -hmm. Let's see our house from there. Let's see our house mm -hmm. in this picture. <laughs> All right. Cool. Good, good, good questions. All right. Hello, David. Okay, I would like you to sell me on par. Oh, this is good. This is for you, Jack. I would like for you to sell me on Parcel Fact. I have played with the trial and love it. Nice job. However, between Trial Pro 247 and Lookup GPS, and then I plug in Google Earth with a parlay overlay, which I love, I get everything I need. Okay. So, other than saving a handful of clicks, why is it worth hundred dollars a month? Please don't be offended, but but no, in it's fine. I need to get into subscription hell, and I need to be sold more. Thanks I understand. So it yeah. it's, it is uh, it does it's how much is Parlay? You know, I went when we priced this thing, I went back and forth because Parlay and Parcel Fact are relics. I'm trying to buy Parlay, by the way, the whole company, but and that will happen at some point. But you know. Parlay is not as pretty, but I agree with you, David. I absolutely agree with you. So if you want me to reprice it and you'll sign up, I will. Let me know how much it is. Yeah, what is Parlay? Yeah, how much is Parlay? Let's find out. So he's going, well, so wait a minute, though. So parcel fact. But it's so better. For now, he has to use one, two. Well, you know what? Here's part of it, though, David. You have Title Pro. And you know how to use all this stuff and you have parlay so you're paying for two things already this is also for the general public that doesn't have any of those things no i i understand but. his point i totally I, and i agree with it mm -hmm. you know why why is it if it's substantially more then tell me why and and i'll consider it if it's not see pricing information on the left there yeah down down perfect Hundred bucks a quarter, twenty five dollars a month. All right, Dylan and I are going to have this conversation right after this. Right after this, and we will consider try uh, absolutely pricing it like that. But Parlay doesn't include any ownership data, does it? No, it doesn't. But I don't. You know, David's got a point. I agree. I you know I agree. See, the thing with Parlay is that it's got. I, mean, I don't think Parlay has any of that. Parlay has all this other ownership type information with it. You know what I would suggest? Because I know what David's where David's going with all this. I think David should sit tight, keep doing what he's doing. When gold opens up, it's going to be well worth it because he'll get this and he'll get Joe Live and some other things that are going to make it all worth his while. Just a thought. We'll, we'll talk about it. Joe. Yeah. See, okay, the cool. whole thing, David, what's different about it? Here's the selling piece. But... You've got Title Pro, so you don't need this feature, but a lot of people who don't have this do. Mm -hmm. This is a big deal because this is all going to be expanded here massively. So John Holder owns this property. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal for a lot of people that don't under understand 24-7. They don't have all these things that you have. Mm -hmm. to find, to, to, in two or three clicks to find out who owns the property, what it was sold for, um, you know, what, it was, what it's zoned for, well, how large it is, uh, you know, and all the the assessor data, which is, this is going to go to 130 statistics, every single statistic the county has on it. Those are pretty big differences between Parlay. Are they, you know, $75 a month different? Not for you, they're not, because you have access to this other stuff, and you know how to use it because you watched all the videos that we produced. So there's people like on Bigger Pockets that really, uh, we, we might have two levels of membership here like a membership level for David and a membership level for uh, people in bigger pockets who are just trying to find ownership. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it, Joe. Okay. 
It's a great point though, and I agree. Mm -hmm. So Luke said, uh, asked, when, when do you write separate checks for the county, treasurer, and our recorder? <laughs> Whenever they tell me I have to. <laughs> separate <laughs> checks, I don't understand. Sometimes they do, they have to write a check for this, and then a separate for the, you know, like the, um, you know, the documentary the transfer tax. Sometimes that has to be separate oh, from the reporting fee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but he says here for different portfolios, different owners, different properties are not at all and just combine them all in one check. I've been buying these <laughs> reams of checks. Oh, so I will do as many as old, like some of them, like if I could put all the, all the recording fees on one check, which the usual, let me do that. I can do that. If I can roll in all like the, you know, documentary transfer taxes to the $2 and 10 cents, whatever it is, I can put all those in and I will print out a list with them. If they'll let me, I will. Because I'm with you, so do you want to add anything to that? Jack? No, no, I don't okay. actually. I honestly, you, know, you know way more about that than I do, Joe. Okay. Yeah, it just depends on the depends on the recorder. All right. Um, anonymous asked. <laughs> <laughs> Seth reviewed states where an attorney was required to close. Is this one of those things where you can just get away with it without using an attorney? If that's the case. I would love doing business in my own state. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so this it turns out this attorney thing is really just kind of a local cultural myth. There is even, I've even been seeing it so far as, you know, there are certain recorders that won't record your stuff because they don't have an attorney uh, blessing it with holy water. Mm -hmm. So I, I've heard from people that this is what usually happens about this attorney situation. There are people in a group that pipe out and they jump in and they say, absolutely, New York is an att a mandatory attorney state. And then we dig into it a little further and we find out that that's what they've been, that's what they've heard their whole life. And it's tr really actually not true. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, what I'd ask Seth is, is it required? To, well, like, I, what did he say? I don't, I don't know, I'm full of Seth stuff. I don't want to do it right now, but. Mm -hmm. Seth is usually extremely detailed and, uh, you know, really looks into stuff. So I, I would take what he says very seriously, but not let it go unchecked. Let's leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Love it. Steve asked, is the 50K to 300K figure Jack mentioned for higher value properties to pursue for retail value? Also, is the per record price in request gone up to 10 cents as listed on the session intro page? So. No, um, it's not. It has not gone up. For Land Academy members, it's 8 cents for everybody. Right. right. The 10 cent number is for people who use a product that we have called ownersdata.com, which applies to no members. What it is, is access to RealQuest for 100 bucks a month and 10 cents a record download. But and they, there are a lot of people coming to us saying, look, we do 5,000 deals with already. We just want real quest cheaper. And we decided to allow them to have it cheaper with, and you don't get anything else. You don't get access to the mailer, uh, access to ladder stream or anything. Okay. You buy a $50,000 piece of property. Don't time me. I know this hurts. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right. S Steve did it. Steve K did it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Steve K, you opened up a can of worms here. This, this is where, this is one of Jack's favorite things is asking these questions. So um, he's going to try to make this table for you real quick to, to illustrate his answer. I had, a cal I had a call, a consulting call with a guy yesterday who's better, way better than me and me at, at Excel. And um, I mean, I was blown away. It was truly amazing. Mm. You know who you are if you're listening. So you buy a piece of property for $50,000 and you sell it for 80, but it's really worth, let's say like 200, which is very common because pe the person who needed the 50,000 bucks bought it a long time ago or inherited it or whatever. There's zero competition in this mark in this area for what we do. If you do that 10 times, we do it once a month, 12 times. Anybody can do this 12 times. You just have, it's the exact same thing we all do. It's just bigger money. 
it's the same analysis. It's the same. And we're, I'm going to go into this Redfin thing in a second and tell how to smoke these properties out. If you do this 12 times a month, I mean, 12 times a year, everybody's doing math in their head. Guess how much money you make a year? $360,000 a year. Even Dan, even uh, David Van Stinky Stake could quit his job. I don't think he, he made close to that, but and we, can everybody, every single person, including the new people, do one deal a month from a time standpoint and a talent standpoint? Hell yes. So where are these deals? Jill, can I jump in here? Mm -hmm. This is how you find those kinds of deals in the beginning. So there's a function in Redfin. Redfin is free and it's a direct IDX feed to participating MLS, um, to participating regional and local MLSs. You can, I hope you can see this, it's small. You can do it for houses or condos, but let's just stick to land. And they're nice enough to include the land listings. You can do it for apartment buildings. Unfortunately, they maxed your square, your, they, I'd love to look at it, look it up for 5,000, but they only let you do it up. The lowest max is 50,000 bucks. Everything else, for the sake of this, we're just gonna leave blank. And let's start with Los Angeles, the second large, second or third most expensive market in the housing market in the country. Now, would I go run around and for twenty-five thousand uh, dollars south of, uh, you know, this is actually Orange County, for two, uh, twenty acres, twenty acres for fifteen grand or twenty-five thousand dollars? Excuse me, that sounds to me like a smoking deal. But do I run off and make an offer on it? Hell no, because it's not efficient. What it tells me is that if there's $1,000 an acre property um, or whatever, it ends up being a small, plus a one or two or five properties in a market like this, that might be, there might be $5,000 property there and it might be a good place to send up a campaign. Look at this. So this is 21 days on market. This has been on the market for 20, 2,200 days which is something like eight years. So it's a, it's a, it's fiction. It's just a realtor trying to get, uh, or there's something wrong with the deal. Mm -hmm. Here's a little cluster. These are, these are how you really know this is, you've got something here to, to, to send out. You know, this is just North of Irvine, Jill. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to say, I used to live uh, right there in Tustin. <laughs> right. 660 days might be something wrong with the deal. It might be a bank deal. Might be a foreclosure situation, you don't know. But when you find little clusters like this, especially it, ha it happens up here. When you f start to find some little clusters, this all came about because Jill and I are buying a cabin in Big Bear. And I, if you go east of Big Bear, in fact, I'll just pull, up, pull it up right now. Told you, Steve K. <laughs> this is what Jack does. This everyone. This is what Jack does when he uh, t takes a day off work. This is exactly what he's doing. And then we start another company because, and, and then everybody rolls their eyes in our offices. Yeah, he fit, he figures out something. It's like, oh my goodness. This is your. This is Jack's downtime and fun time. <laughs> you remove the outline, and so check this out. Now check this out. This is a cool, great little resort spot. Fifty thousand dollar piece of property right on the water. But check this out. Now you start to see these little clusters right up here: two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, five thousand, two thousand for these lot for these properties, right? Well, guess what, man? If you said, how easy is it to send a little micro mailer right here or wherever? Now eighty people are going to do it. For a five hundred bucks or a thousand dollars, and then sell them for two, five, eight, twelve thousand bucks. It really adds up. You know, if you buy a piece of property for a thousand dollars and sell it for twenty five hundred, and you do one a week, now you're starting to approach some serious money, or mm -hmm. let's even just say five, because that's realistic too. If I mean, that's a really good creative way. To, to find some property pretty quick. There's a ton of cheap property up the coast, like in Oregon, in Northern California. All right, mm -hmm. go ahead, Jill. Cool. 
Okay, so Eric circled back around and said, can we touch back up on his previous question? What kind of deed do I need to create from this deceased dad to the son? This is a package deal from a seller and it needs in it its next to a golf course. Okay, so- I would so, go to title to do this deal. If it's a golf yeah. course property, I would just go straight to title. That, yeah. that is a, a, just fair warning. That, that we're going to say go straight to title, Joe and I, on a lot of these questions from here on out. Because we could hire it, and we are in the process of hiring an extremely experienced escrow agent, or you can call and ask them these questions all the time, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll help you. Thank you. It's just, this is, it's just beyond the scope of what we do here. Can I do a blanket answer? Yeah. Traditionally, the grantor and the grantee will still never change. It's only the signature block that's going to change if you're doing it for, for, for a lot of these transactions, but you got to make sure you're doing it right. So... Okay, moving on. Luke says, do you ever get portfolios of land or deals that have utilities involved? This land portfolio in front of me is over 400 properties and the water company, maybe keep the water yeah. company and mm -hmm. sell the land. Yeah. Sell the whole thing to a developer, sell yep. them all in pieces. Head sell them so here's the thing, what you need to do, Luke, is if, you're gonna, if uh, there's 400 properties in here with the water company, and the water company usually is a shared well, or a shared series of wells. And so, you know, Jill and I had a cabinet in uh, Crown King, Arizona, and the guy that built it, uh, there were five lots, only one was built. We bought the cabin from this guy. It had a shared well for five lots, and it came with its own water company, which is exactly what you're talking about here. So what you could do when there's 400 properties like this is start your own HOA. Uh, take control over the water situation. It's gonna cost some money to manage it and stuff and charge $39 a month. Mm -hmm. And when somebody buys a piece of land, then they start paying anybody. This is a good situation to be in. Mm -hmm. Love it. David's wondering when Jill Pay will be available. I'm afraid to answer that because Jill will kick me on the figuratively kick me on the table. <laughs> Soon, I'm gonna say next 90 days, right? Yeah, for sure, okay, for right. sure, for sure, 90 days. Will it be less than Geek Pay? No, no flat fee. You know what though? With well, here's my whole thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, Pay David. Does. I got an email the other day about this. My understanding is GeekPay is not a credit card processor. It's just a way of keeping track of payments. So what we're doing is going above and we're like we're becoming the equivalent. We're like line us up to PayPal. We're next to PayPal. We're on their level or yeah. Blue Pay or all that stuff. So. But For real estate. My understanding is Geek Pay does nothing. It's just like I said, it's managing payments and you can keep, because you link Stripe to Geek Pay, you link things to Geek Pay. No, we are Stripe. That's what yeah. Jill Pay will be. So it'll be yeah. a whole different ball game. So, because I was reading, I was watching I, a little video on Geek Pay the other day trying to figure well, out. So what is it, Jill? Tell us, because I don't know yeah. either. Because, I mean, Craig, help me, David, if, the, if I'm wrong. It looks like Geek Pay, because it says in there, you go and you link up Stripe, you link up however, however you want the payments to be handled. And it's a way to manage uh, terms payments and things like that. That's all it is. It's not replacing the need for Stripe because, or Blue Pay or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, so does, okay. it, does that answer your question? Yeah, sure does. Yeah. So I mean, he's still processing payments back th illegally or against the rules with some other processor behind it. But no, it says in there you have to link Stripe or something to it. It's not even he's oh. he's not even doing it. That's oh my, my point. Jesus. So no, that's a classic. So that's here's, classic could, Park, Mc, Park McCluskey product. So you can have Jill Pay as part of your Geek Pay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a product so, called Mort Care, which is, is mortgage care, which man it's a note manager is what it is. Yeah, that's it. That's oh and it's so right. That's so yeah. He says you're correct. GeekPay has the following: five different credit card merchants for the down payment, plus Actum as the HC as the HH provider for recurring payments. So yeah, he's Good. not doing anything when, special. I'm going to do that, Joe. When when Jill's when Jill Pay's done, I'll call Mark and and uh, we'll make Jill Pay an option. We'll write an API for it. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Claire asks, good, hey Claire, circling back to easements. Oh, this is good. I'm subdividing. Look, do you remember when Claire first joined our world? This just does my heart so good right now, Claire. I, I love this. Okay, I'm subdividing a 20 acre lot into five four acre lots. 
there's an existing easement to access the 20 acres. Can I, should I give this easement to each of the five properties? Not this all of them will be reached by the question. easement. fantastic question. Sorry, it's a deeding question, but it's a subject. No, and it's not a deeding question. It's like, this is a fantastic question. Yeah. Yeah, so I would, uh, I would even consider, I'm gonna even just bite my words now, or I'm gonna talk out of both sides of my mouth bit versus in the beginning of the, of the talk. <laughs> I would absolutely extend this easement to these other properties and I would even go so far as if it's flat to just blade a road right to all of them. If they don't all have actual road access, I would ha heck yes, I would do that because I, that's going to, that will change how much money you make. Mm -hmm. I've never parcel split property where there wasn't direct access to the property to uh, one that we were splitting off. Mm -hmm. Good question. And this is, I don't know, will land can really syndicate to Craigslist? Yes, and here's why, because we're going to kick this old school. We're going to have people just actually take your posting and put it on Craigslist for you. Does well, it syndicate that's... automatically with like magic IT dust? No, it doesn't. Uh, Craigslist doesn't have an inbound API to my knowledge at all. Because they, they keep old school. We're going to, you, you know, for again, for the Land Academy members, this, all these services are free. They won't be when uh, to the to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is going to pay for for what you guys get for free. Mm -hmm. Luke asked, "Do you ever ever get into splitting undivided land in Arizona? Yeah, making over thirty six acres requires reporting. Part of the reporting yeah. is federal land act stuff. Do you ever do any of these those reports? No, he's talking about um, public reports, and no." Right. Uh, in Arizona, you can take a property and split it five ways mm -hmm. before you have to do a public report. So a 36 acre property, you could cut it down five ways. Usually they're, they're square. When you, usually it's a 40 acre property and you rewrite the descriptions if it's not in a, it's not in a subdivision. And nine times out of 10, like the, uh, the county will let you do that. No problem at all. You may have to get a survey. It, it probably has to have access, but that's what happens in Arizona. Mm -hmm. This is good. I look, we're on the same page, Luke. Landhub uses a guy in India to post all of our Craigslist. Bingo. So, yeah. Um, hi, Savannah. Savannah asks, uh, my friend wants to get into the land investing business, but he's lazy. <laughs> Savannah's talking about Michelle, her husband, right? No, now. she's not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> no, no. I think I know the You know, the who, whole. The whole thing about, you know, my friend's got all kinds of problems. You know, he's mentally ill. And he's right. He's really talking about themselves. Exactly. <laughs> Savannah's, she's done. She's getting lazy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> do you think there are any opportunities for folks who just have cash to invest? Well, there will be. Um, he made us end up being my funder. Ha, ha, ha. I love it. Every um, single day, I mm -hmm. talk to people. I talk to two types of people. Uh, a person like this lazy friend here who's got a ton of money and they don't want to do any work and other people who have no money and are tremendously ambitious and want to learn about data and the whole thing. So Jill and I, are, that's what land crowd fund or land tank.com like shark tank will be. It will put those two groups of people together. You'll post a piece of property and the money people will say, hell yes, I'll do it. Just like on shark tank. Mm -hmm. So it's coming. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Everybody wins. Do we get ownership in Title Pro 24-7? Oh, my goodness, yes. You, can, you have all your title work. You can go back and... He's not, he's not asking. Oh. He would, that's a leftover question from when we were talking about parcel fact, I think. He says, yeah, but we get ownership in 20, Title Four of 24-7. Oh, that's true. Okay, you're Captain, right. Captain, Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love it. Well, you know what? I mean, here's the thing. I mean, and for, I don't know, some people are still, David, subbing out stuff to VAs. That's a parcel fax for. You yeah. know how to do it. And not to mention, by the way, yes, you don't get all the quadrants. This is one thing parcel fact does that you don't get from Title Pro and those other things. You don't get all the. You know, but he's comparing it to Parlay, Joe. I, David's okay. right. He's not wrong. Okay. Okay, I got it. But yeah, you know, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, do you want to spend? I have to. I have this subscription over here, and I have this over here, and I have this over here, and this over here. I have four different places to go, or one. So that's. I mean, that's for me. It's a big savings. Mm -hmm. So, 
I guess it's personal preference too. So, okay. Right. All right. Moving on. Uh, hey, Miller. Miller says, I'm new here, so I hope you don't get this question a million times, but where is the best place to find sold property data for a county? You guys are awesome, by the way. Thanks. Oh, Miller. that's a good question. Completed sales are, they're this nebulous concept that no one can really, you know, we're all data people here, and it just drives everyone nuts, me included, that you can't find a place that's where there's real completed sales data for this, pro for this product type. So you have to find it in a few places and some, and sometimes they mix in sales. It's just, a, you know, for data people like us, it's a, it's a pain in the butt. You can start with the uh, real quest. There's lots of properties in there that have actually sold, pri uh, you know, prior sales information. And the more that time goes on, the better that the most assessors are about getting the more sophisticated computers are, the, the more data is available, but there's still not one place. You can try Zillow Trulia. But the property has to have a physical address, and then you can try uh, the MLS uh, if you haven't. And we will be releasing a product where you can see the completed sales data comp for that. So this year we will. Mm -hmm. So until then, that's why I say forget about completed sales because it only look at the bottom one, two, three, four, five actual live for sale property, and I think you're going to be better off that way. I wish there was a better answer. There's not. And if somebody else, ha somebody does have a better answer, I'd love to hear about it. It's a couple sites could popping up that are IDX feeds from MLS that, that but it's all houses driven. Yep. David said he'll, he loves the $25. <laughs> love it. All right. Michael says, any update on simple file on a simple file group? Right? I have not gotten it to this, gotten to it this week. I'm, I'm, that's the God's honest truth. I have not reached out to them to find out if uh, what Luke accomplished is any indication. You know what, Michael, call, uh, contact Luke. Luke got a fantastic smashing rate. Mm -hmm. So all I'm going to do is say Luke Smith's part of our group and we need this rate for everyone. Mm -hmm. Luke's already done all the work. Cool. Andy loves it. Yes, when Jack opens up Excel. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. You just, it's because you get lost. It's like, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm over here. My eyes are up here. Not on your, take your eyes off your monitor and look here. <laughs> My mom had a cat when I was a little that you couldn't eat your dinner, you know? The cat would just walk on right on. It wanted so much attention all the time. Like walk across the table? Yeah. You couldn't, like, if you read the paper or anything, that's what you did back then, you know, you read the paper. That's awesome. All right, we have 17 questions still to get through. Did you want to show us something in the middle here? Like... I, I did, with red, okay. it was Redfin. Okay, good. You were well, sleeping. I was not. I still see it here. All right, Jason asks, I bought my first three properties, nice, in Terrell uh, County, Texas. Yay, I now realize that the road uh, the roads leading to it are private roads blocked by a gate. Oh, ask Luke about this one. Yeah. Any tips on selling it or access? And Luke says carry uh, bolt cutters and a bolt lock. Bolt cutters. Bolt cutters, <laughs> a lock, and an ice pick. <laughs> use, the, use the ice pick for what you deem appropriate. Uh, uh, so, because this is, I mean, that's just because someone puts a fence up and they put a lock on it doesn't mean it's legitimate and it's right. That's just some crazy old boy deciding I want Cal to do this. California, Arizona, and Colorado have a, a, a statutory law that says you cannot, you cannot um, <laughs> withhold reasonable access to property of a person who owns property, even if they have to cross uh, across your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to explain that to somebody with a 12 gauge in their hand, but that's the truth. Yeah, that's what, that's what Michael said. Michael said, carry a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, Richard asks, do you have any tips for finding index maps online? I know Jack said you never send a mailer without looking at the APN scheme. Will the subdivision alone be good enough to specify areas for pricing as long as the parcels have similar attributes? The answer is yes. Uh, on the last question there, will the subdivision alone be good enough? Heck yes. That's even better. That's better mm -hmm. than, a, than an uh, index map. 
I have an overseas group collecting uh, as many index maps as what they can possibly find right now. So there's a, we're going to release a site before the end of the year called countywise.com. And it's an entirely free resource that's where you can look. There's a picture of the United States. You click down to the state and you click down to the county. And there's a tremendous amount of information about the county there. Tremendous. So we've got an army of, of overseas women attacking this, getting all this data uh, in, in place. And one of the things they're doing is getting a, any of the index maps available. Nobody uses, to, them any, nobody uses them anymore. So we're literally asking people that work at the county to t take a picture of the one that's on the wall and send it to us. I have to point out Nick's, Nick's apologizing to head out early. He's got to go meet the buyer. <laughs> all, all in for six ten, sold for twenty nine ninety nine. Nice. That's fantastic. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I love this stuff, guys. Yeah, I love that too. Keep it coming. Um, Jason, That's why we're here. Exactly. Jason said, um, one property is fenced in, fenced in by a ranch that is represented by an attorney. I reached out to them to sell it to them. They say they claim adverse possession on it for the last 20 years, but will offer me $100 an acre. Lowball. Am I? I'm holding my ground, but I want your thoughts. Would you pay? If you'd let us know, Jason, either in the chat box or at the bottom, I'd like to know. If you're making any money at all, see these are the kinds of things that you just send out more what more mail and do the next deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, but if you've already bought that, if you've already bought this property, and we've all been there, mm -hmm. we're like, yeah, man, had I known. And so, don't kick yourself about that. That that kind of stuff happens. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you got to do a lot of deals, so it just doesn't matter. If you sold it, if you bought it for a hundred, and they want want to want to buy it from you for a hundred, just to end it, so you can get onto the next deal or deals, I would. Uh, you paid one hundred and fifty. They have to buy it. They have mm -hmm. to buy it for one fifty, and they can look up and find out what you paid too. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a hundred thousand, hundred dollars an acre for cash, and fifty dollars on uh, finance the extra fifty or something. Mm -hmm. Yes, would I sell it to them and get that get, and end the madness? Absolutely, I would. Would you, Jill? Mm hmm Totally. Is it worth is it worth your time and digging your heels in? No. So okay. All right. Richard said, How reliable is the is the pricing data on Redfin? It's fantastic. Uh, you know, it's for sale property, but Red the the source of the data for Redfin is IDX feeds and IDX from the local and regional MLSs. So it's it's for sale property. It's extremely reliable data. The limitation to, uh, to watch this, watch your screen. Limitation to Redfin is that the cover it, lots and lots and lots of, uh, of areas. See, see how this is darked out? They don't have a deal cut with that, that MLS yet. See these, the urban MLSs all sign up for everything and the rural ones don't, well, guess what? That's where we sell all our property. So, you know, it's a fantastic tool for, for wh where they have coverage. Mm -hmm. and this mapping function just makes me jealous because this is where I'm trying to, I'm going to, we're trying to accomplish this. It's extremely complicated for uh, land pen. Mm -hmm. David loves it. David said Scott is Redfin thing has his juices flowing. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this is in southwest of Denver. It's a property for nine grand. Where there's nine thousand dollar property, there's a thousand dollar property. Mm -hmm. For sure. Where there's fifty thousand dollar houses, there's five thousand dollar houses too. So you can do the same thing with houses. You know, mm -hmm. I just have land clicked here. You can say that even the same thing with the uh, so these are houses that are less than fifty grand, there's only one. <laughs> You call that a house? It's a it's a brand, you know. I know, I'm kidding. Unfinished cabin. It's been on the, on the market for 571 days, 40 mm -hmm. acres. So it's nothing to sneeze at. No, you know what? That's awesome. There's a structure on it. I think it's cool. You think it's cool until I, we're going to move there? I know, like this top one you're looking at. You're going to put me in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, Joe? Oh, we would die. We rolled up, and Jack says, "Here it is." <laughs> Welcome home. I know exactly how that would go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or be... this one. This is another beauty. 
She would be. Dial- you would take a five thousand dollar Uber ride back oh to Los Angeles. I would exactly do that. You know what? I got to tell you, we had we had kid number kid number three and I were in the car, and I said, you know, I wonder if we could take an Uber to like, I don't know, Sacramento. So we're like, I don't know. Let's look this up. And she's like, golly, you can do that. You can put in an eight hour drive away. How much you was know, it? It's like fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we tested it. You could actually put, like, dream it up. Put in a crazy Uber address and see what happens. Wow. Um, now, and the person can deny it. And I remember, because we're in the back of an Uber while we're doing this, we're, like, rolling. So we're asking the Uber driver, like, talk to me. He's like, well, yeah, actually, so then I can deny it. I can accept it or I can deny it, you know, kind of, you know, or I can refuse it. I'm like, that's awesome. Hey, thank you, David. Said you took a taxi from San Carlos, Mexico to Phoenix <laughs> for $700. So we were just in San Carlos, remember, Joe? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. So, yeah, you can do that. So, this is so good. All right. Look we have- this house is for $30,000. I Look, know. Look, it's an $80,000 house in Oklahoma. Awesome. All right, we have 15. 15- you, re- you can't build a house for that cheap. I don't care where it is. Jack, we have five minutes and 15 All right, questions. well, I'm sorry. Do you want to try okay. to blow through them? Yeah, sure, go. Okay. Jessica, awesome. Another newbie question. Can you give an overview of the steps of optioning a property? A seller we bought a few parcels from has an additional acreage that is larger than our acquisition criteria was for the mailer. We do not have the funds at the moment, and we're thinking maybe we should option it. Thanks. Perfect what I think you should, Jessica, what I think you should do is reach out to everybody in Success Plant and find some money people and do it with them. Or she could option it, and this is a good example of doing that. So the, the steps of optioning a property are... Hey, Mr. Smith, I'm out of funds. You know, um, would you, you know, I know you want to sell it for X. Will you give me 90 days to go try to sell it and see if I can get your X? And if they say, heck yeah, have them sign a quick little one page option agreement that you have. And then you're going to go market it on your website for whatever price you want to sell it for and then try to do it. If it happens, great. Before you get the money, by the way, make sure you call him back and go, by the way, we still have this. Are we still on? Yep, good, great. So you can do the deal. Um, and, and if it doesn't sell cause you priced it really high or, and it's, you know, whatever, it's, it's all good. No skin off your nose, you know, and that's it. Or then maybe you have the money now in 90 days and you want to buy it for X. Do yeah. I mean, if you do it with a, with the S title escrow, it's even easier. They do all the work for you. But you, this way you don't have to open up any extra pay any money yet. Cause you, you know, if by it's the a way, smoking, if it's a smoking deal. Somebody on Success Plant will do it with you. David already did. Look at the bottom. David put his email in there. <laughs> David, milehighruleland.com will help you, Jessica. So if you need some, some funds. Perfect. So, yeah. And then, you know, that's um, Hootboard. A lot of people do deals like this in the in, the, deal, in board. deal board. Yeah. So cool. Tori is using Zimple Money, and it's working good. And that's great. It'll catch up with you, Tori, but knock yourself out until that happens. Mm-hmm. All right, and David said, okay, it's running. Mark's, Mark's product is running now and still far better than anything out there. Then Zipple Money doesn't allow you to link to your website. Got it. I use Zipple Money, and they, and they kill me with their fees. Yeah. Plus, you can't automate. Right. Okay, got it. Again, that's why we're doing, starting these companies. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks. This is good. Kathleen said, Claire, I'm doing something similar, but with the – a lakefront parcel and a few interior non lakefront parcels. The lakefront parcel is more money than the interior parcels, but I'm going to create a narrow easement mm. on the lakefront parcel and deed the easement access to the interior parcels. Thereby, man. Remember me Kathleen? Now. Talk about Claire. When she, when, she, listen to Kathleen. I know, non lakefront access, but access nonetheless to the lake. I'm going to keep my lakefront parcel or keep the lakefront parcel with a new. Air, narrow easement and put one of my arrow streams on it oh, and to create a vacation rental. Kathleen, I'm so proud Brilliant. of you. Brilliant. You get Kathleen was the green, greener than green when she started with us and now she's killing it. And that's, I think that's great. That is so awesome. Love it. Love it. What David asks, what does posting domination use to post a Craigslist? They say they have an automated way to do it. I don't know that one. They may have written an API. And if, and like I said, if they have an open port to accept that stuff, that's then, uh, then we'll do it that way. Mm-hmm. I haven't looked into it that far. I know that Zillow, Trulia, um, all have, they all have 
feeds right in. It's not as much work as it sounds. The real work is producing the content of the, of the uh, listing. After that, even if you have to do it by hand, it goes really fast. Mm -hmm. Except on Landwatch, which sucks. Mm -hmm. Landwatch is owned by Land and Farm now, by the way. So I expect it to get it. It can go only up from here, I hope. You think? I'm gonna I'm gonna reserve judgment on that when I see what it <laughs> what it come what 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 how it goes. We'll see. Yeah. All right, I'm not sure where you're going with that, Savannah. I hope I I hope I'm sure that's a joke. Okay, Luke asked. There is a reporting to Arizona, and then there's reporting to the feds. Yes, basically, if you're making over yeah. 100 properties, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're tied back to the. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, if you want to have more hundred more more than 100 properties in a subdivision, you have to report it to the federal government. Like the securities kinds of rules. I'm going to let the tone of my voice tell you from, how I manage that. From the 60s, all kinds of rules, and you basically have to buy the property back if you don't do the reports. Next it's question. Like, Next question. Amount of days, all that good stuff. Do you know any states that are as easy to split land in as Arizona? I know one, and uh, it's Texas. I, I, there's a lot of other ones, and Luke, and we can talk about it if you want. Again, that's one of the things that the virtual assistants that I've hired are smoking out for us all. Unless you want to be like our member who goes and sits down and, and buys them gulp, big gulps and Cheetos. <laughs> Did you guys read that in Success Plan? If you haven't read it, it's like the land, the Cheetos, and the, I don't know, Dr. Pepper. And it's like, a, it's awesome. So I'm, I don't know, you guys probably have heard that show this week. Look up, look up Trevor in Success Plan and, and, and read about his experience subdividing property in Texas with, with really the people good. that it's truly perfect humor for this group. Okay. All right, David. We'll, David, we'll, we'll, we'll get, email me, David, and I'll get, get we'll get on on my calendar and we'll talk. Thank you. Brandon asked, do you have a virtual mailbox? Oh, yes, I do. Funny. You're just talking about it's called, it. It's called uh, Joe live. Mm -hmm. And that will be released. We're, we're working as far as fast as we can to get Joe live done for everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go find a mailbox and you don't need to answer your own phone and probably some other features too. But I can, I don't want to get in trouble talking about Joe live because it's really Joe's company. Like I don't own, I don't even own 1% of it. Mm hmm. Thank you. Oh, I, Michelle, thank you, Michael. Michael said I laughed my ass off when I heard Jack talk about the recorders eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. This is a, this is a, Trevor has a, a real, even better, well described experience along those lines. Exactly. Um, oh, this is good. Claire got some really good past sales data from a realtor. Start calling. Oh, that's a great tip. I love it. CoreLogic has a completed sales database that's all tied to 100, they have 100% compliance from all the MLSs around the country. And we're trying to license that product. They've already said, yes, verbally, we'd be happy to license it because the Real Crest Pro thing's going well and the Parcel Tech thing's going well. So this thing of completed sales, <laughs> next time, this time next year on these calls, we won't be talking about completed sales anymore. We'll, we will have it at our finger, fingertips. Okay. Gary said, I just realized Parcel Fact is up and running. Yep, I'm a silver member. Do I need to sign up for the $99 a month, which is okay? I'm only asking because I'm a silver member and I didn't know because I want to get going. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if we make any pricing changes, everybody will get whatever the new pricing changes is. Like if it goes down, don't worry, we, you will be, you will get that. And then it will be in gold <laughs> coming up. Why don't you get to talk about my companies, but I don't get to talk about your companies? I'm only relaying what you just said <laughs> earlier. <laughs> you know what? We're not in the same room right now. You can't kick me under the table. I know. That's why I have the the, the, uh, the uh, that's why I have the kahunas to talk to you like this because we're oh, in different states. Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, did I say something wrong? <laughs> no, you didn't. Not okay, at all. got it. All right. Because I know how you roll. All right. <laughs> oh, Gary, you are all good. Does the mandatory, Tori asks, hey, Tori, does the mandatory reasonable access apply to New Mexico as well? Yes. Please check, Tori, okay? Um, because my knowledge of, of this mandatory access thing is at least three years old. But the way the world seems to be going, it, it doesn't go, it gets more, e it gets easier to access property and easier to subdivide it than harder. Mm -hmm. So, yes. 
Luke said, I got this realtor who's asking about a property. Guy bought it. Now the realtor is pissed at me because that her client bought it off my website. <laughs> that's awesome. I told him I'm not a realtor and it's not listed on the MLS. Yeah, that's great. Like when I calculated her missed commission out to be ninety dollars, she calmed down. Did you get this kind of call? That's hilarious. She doesn't know what her freaking commission is going to be. Oh my gosh! You know what? Gosh. If I had a nickel, if 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 somebody charged me to piss off a realtor a day, I would I would take the charge. I would be charged for that. I yeah. you know. You pissed off a realtor. You're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the other thing that Jack does just for fun on his days off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's so. Real funny. estate agents. Jill and I talk about this after a couple of glasses of wine sometimes. How can you justify making thirty to sixty or eighty, a hundred thousand dollars on a deal? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. It's really ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So keep pissing them off, Luke. Thanks for everybody. Well, well, no, hold, please. I think there are some real good agents out there. They do show. Here's my thing. If you're a real good agent, you're going to really show up and you're going to help me move the furniture out, make my house look good, help me stage it or bring in the right people, arm me with the right resources. But so many of them don't. I've heard people like, you know, what? I did all the open houses and I made the cookies and I had to give them, you know, $50,000. Well, what just happened? Yeah. So. That's that's thing. Which is ninety nine point eight percent of them, right? In my experience, exactly. All right. If I'm paying for both land and farm and land watch, should I cancel the land watch subscription? Since everyone's saying land watch was purchased. No, because I I tried that too with our advertising and stuff, and they're entirely and completely at this point separate offices. So, no, they're not. They probably will consolidate everything at some point, but no. Okay, so I'm sitting in my room right now, and I have two staff members in, in the room with me, okay? So I, I hear you. So we need to have all hands on deck and I'm gonna, I'm gonna work with, the, with our people here the next um, couple days to free me up and to get the stupid Jill live, not stupid, but you know what I mean. You get, we, all, we need, everybody needs Jill live now and I hear it and I get it. And so we have some of the information. I got some more of it today. So, all right. Jack, can we do it in a week? If I get all my stuff together, yeah. can I? Can the I, website's done. A week from a week from tomorrow. The website's done and attached to a payment whole thing, and all of, uh, the with content on the website's not done, but the website is, is done. All right. Could we can we do it in a week? Let's. We could do it by. The, could we do it by the the call next time? No, the but I want to say I want to say like by next Friday. Yeah. Audrey, Let's say we could do it by month. Are you good at that? No, we could no do way. It by, we could do it by Monday, not this mo not this Monday, the Monday afterward. Monday okay. the eight, Monday the fifth or whatever that is. Yes, Monday the fifth. Okay, so Monday the fifth. I'll commit to that. All right, I'm looking at Audrey. Can we do this? All right, all right. Oh boy, this is gonna be good. All right, you guys heard it here. All right, is that right? The second, third, fourth. I think okay. So Monday the fifth. We're gonna really try to do this. So, all right, we're we're super, good. super try. Let's just connect. Can, is it stuff that happens? So, mm -hmm. how about we complete it that week? We say the week of the fifth. Let's say that. I could, yeah, and it's, I'm going to try to do it all in once where I have the phones and yeah, the virtual and mailbox. If mail, not, mail the, thing's done. I, I, uh, oh, well, that's easy. I talked then. to the guy today. Okay, good. Okay, so Miller, yes, you're asking what do we do if I if I start with one now and then I have to switch it. Okay, so here's what I don't want you to do, Miller. I don't want you to have two different addresses floating out there. So um, if you do for a while, you'll have to like forward from one address to another address. So, Which really sucks because I, every call I take, every single call I take from people that are new that are new on Wednesday for deal review or data review. To ask this exact question, mm -hmm. and I tell them, you know, if you're going to send five thousand units out your first time, then hold off. If you're just going to send fifty or a hundred or five hundred and test it like some people do, it's going to be okay. And you change mm -hmm. the address because they're not going to afford it forever, Joe. Mm -hmm. They're only going to afford the mail for for a while, the short while. Well, here's what I was going to say about forwarding. If you if you have a say you sign up for a, a mailbox place down the street at your from your house kind of thing, you could pay for that for a whole year and let them forward it for a year. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Not the post office, but those guys. Right. So that would work. All right. So Miller, if you can try to hang out there till June 5th, use your mother-in-law's address in the meantime. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea, Joe. Use an address like that for your first mailer that you don't have to pay for or something. There you go. I like David's comment, which is the three three percent of the realtors, you know, that really do their thing, are worth their weight in gold, and that's very, very, very true. So good. Okay, um, Tori, are all? Oh, you know what? And the answer is yes. Yeah, they are. They are recorded. I didn't, I didn't want to answer, but the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. They are recorded. So good. Dude, we got through these questions. <laughs> <laughs> it was like marathon. It's hilarious when you call me dude. Thank you. Wait, Joel says my mom picks up my mail, the P.O. box. I don't want to ask people to send their offers into Japan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. That's perfect. Brilliant. Exactly. Would that be hilarious? <laughs> That is awesome. There you go. And then does she, I'm assuming, Joel, you have your mom scanning them in. That's great. That's classic. So good, good job. All right. Okay. Wait, one more. I'm going to do this. We'll look at this one more question here. It's beer 30. Yes, it is, yes. David. I agree with that. Totally. Hey, Jack, when can we pick a county and push a button and everything go, is done for us? All, LOL. Thanks for all you do. You guys are awesome. That's offers to owners. That website's done too. Um, mm -hmm. And the guys at Letterstream are waiting, and it's all. Uh, the, I think the person who's going to manage that entire effort is in the office with Jill, right? Uh huh. So that her name is Simone. Right. So that's going to be very, like what? I don't know. It's soon, man. It'll uh -huh. be next month for sure. It'll be it'll be in June for sure. Let's leave leave it at that. It's probably even June one. I'm not sure. Can I add to that? Because it's even going to be cooler. You can either push a button A. Or you could even pick up the phone and Simone will do it for you. Yeah, that, that's going to be released. The, the live, the 800 number version will be late, released long before. That, the truth is, the 800 version of you pick up a phone and tell somebody you want, you want to mail all the five acre properties in Arizona with zoning of XYZ and you want it to go out on Thursday the 5th. That version is what will really, um, you know, that version is what I'm more excited about than writing an incredibly expensive and complete uh, website so that you can do it all yourself in the middle of the night. I mean, we can do that, and that's a version two or 3.0 of, of what offers to owners will be, but wouldn't you rather just talk to somebody who really knows what the hell they're doing? Uh -huh. I would. Uh -huh. And then sending everything live back and forth on Zoom or something so you can check it off and say, yes, I agree to this, yes, this PDF looks, this 5,000 unit PDF looks great, please send it to Letterstream and then you can log into your account and letter stream and, and track where it's going and when it's getting there and the whole thing. We've got it all worked out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Do you mind asking this last one for Brandon? Uh, does yeah. letter stream have an, have a API that can be used with Podio? Uh, ask letter stream that ask Chris at, let, uh, Chris at letterstream.com. They have an API that's unbelievably awesome, but it's, uh, does it connect to Podio? No. Can you pull your data back once you send it? Probably. I know that in Podio and any other CRM, you can pull it up. You can pull the data, data up via CSV. All right, Chuck is cracking me up. This is perfect to end this on. This is Chuck. what Chuck's dream is. I'm, I'm waiting to just push the start button on Monday morning and then push the stop button on Friday noon and have everything done for me and then go cash my checks. That's what a platinum level, that's what the platinum level of land investors will be. Hang in there. It's coming. It is coming. Oh, that is awesome. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. I uh, love great questions today. Awesome questions. We'll mm. be here, Jill and I, uh, the same time next week. Thanks very same, much. In the same state. Woo in the same state, yeah, which is good for, good for us. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.